I got the horse right here. The name is Paul Revere, and here's a guy. Hello, racing fans, and welcome back to another edition of Handicapper's Corner, brought to you by the Derby Barn Grill. I'm Mike Heads, along with Drew Forster. We're going to go through the Hastings Race Course Sunday. races. Eight thrillers uh, for the July Sunday, July 10th program. Uh, hopefully, decent weather conditions once again. Uh, I know we're calling for some uh, oh, course, cloudy skies. It's not clear. Mention, it's Wiener Dog Week. Oh, yes. We got Wiener Dogs. Yeah, Saturday, yeah, Sunday. Actually, more of the races will have a little more, t there's a little more time. And yeah. I noticed that when looking at the overnight, it's like usually 28 minutes between races. There's like 32 because we got some uh, we got some talent in between races. Yeah, so too. hopefully with, uh, those wiener dogs, they do not like an off track. So hopefully. No. Whoa, uh, yeah. this will be fun. <laughs> I want to see slop on, on yes, Sunday. Yes, this will be uh, really good. Mighty form on get the Get them running uh, up to their owners, owners and yeah. just smack. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> so we should get a good crowd. Hopefully uh, weather permitting. Uh, everything is a go for the Wiener Dogs. As Mike mentioned, we do have eight races on tap on Sunday. Keep a keen eye to see if the pick six gets hit on Saturday, because if it doesn't, uh, we're going to be up. We're going to hit the 50. We're, we're hitting close the 50, to 50 000. on Sunday, and uh, good races to try and uh, get the lone ticket in the pick six. The first race is a $16,000 claiming event for older Colts and Geldings going six and a half furlongs. Feel the six here, and I did go to the six, Burnham. Uh, Mike Anderson having another very good year, currently our second leading trainer. This horse won sprinting for 12.5, came back, very good effort uh, in a 16. Went up going long in a 25, didn't disgrace himself, uh, a good third behind Slice of Red. Now he goes back in for 16, back sprinting. For me, it's Burnham. His main threat has to be a Adicha, the horse to his inside out of the Anita Bolton barn. Only gets beat uh, two, uh, his last sprint, two starts ago. Uh, led the whole way, got caught late, got beat by Twist Grips and Broad Breeze. Then he tried going long. He's not really a, uh, a route horse. Goes back sprinting, gets Hamill. He's the, the main danger, I feel, to burn him. And I threw a Wild Cat in for third. He should be rolling late. I went six, five, and two. Yeah, I, I have the same horses. Burnham's like looks like the horse in the best form of any of the horses in the field. Yeah. Uh, he's the most gifted horse. Uh, not the most, maybe there's better, you know, Wild Cat and Aditya have better resumes. But I mean, Burnham is, you know, in top form and. Uh, you know, just ran into a slice of red. Pace, yeah. Pace got him beat last time. But yeah, his last sprint, his last sprint was great. He, yeah. He's a nice horse. He's got to be the horse to beat. But the five at itch in for a second, I agree. Blinker's on to uh, perhaps you know, Anita Bolton's trying to get a little more run out of this horse. Uh, definitely the mile on the 16th didn't suit him at all. His even He ran well going long last year, but this is a three-year-old that was in good form. and. Yeah. And you can do that when you're a three-year-old in good form, and maybe you're not, you know, because you're not running against the greatest competition. But I mean, uh, when you're against older horses and you're running along, you gotta really be running at this level. And he got dusted, but I mean, he's a horse back in sprinting. Blinkers connections put Blinkers on. Me, I can see this horse winning. Yeah, uh, he's he's the best horse. A ditch is the best horse in the race for me, and. We'll see if the blinkers are the key. And I agree with Wild Cat. Not his best distance, uh, but could see some fireworks on the head end. It's in command, has speed. After the conflict on the inside, has speed. Uh, the Philly SL Express has some speed. And a ditch. You know, there, there could be some. Yeah. Uh, Wild Cat will be last early, but uh, we'll see if he's, you know, where he finishes late. But I, I can see him circling the field. We'll see how it goes. 6 5 2. I do like uh, Burnham. I agree with through. On to race number two. $4,000 claimers going a mile on a 16th. Uh, uh, I ended up on the five horse, uh, Timber Chopper, even though he, a pretty quick turnaround around last weekend in, in, at Emerald Downs. Couldn't get a race here. Didn't want to run for the 8,000. That was the only other race that was available for these kind of horses going a mile on the 16th. So uh, off to go to Seattle. Ran a pretty good race. I think back on his home ground is going to be pretty tough for four. I like him to win it. Put the four horse rulers, Halo's Quest, pardon me, in for in for second. I uh, always like this horse. He's pretty nice, you know, pretty neat horse. When he is at a mile sixteenth, he has speed. He's got versatility. He can do whatever you want. You can place him in any spot. And he still runs good races. And I put the one promise glory in for third. I think the horse, uh, you know, needs a good pace to to help him out. But, uh, you know, may, might get it. We'll see how Majestic Mark and the Safe Fabulous do. But uh, I don't see that pace being that hot. Same agent. You know, they don't 
really, white shield and Havel don't really cook on the head end, and uh, I don't see a fast pace. So uh, I, I just think Timber Topper is your horse to beat, 5 4 1. I did go with Promise Glory. I loved that race last time. He likes to go long, and he likes to run in the slop. He's an honest guy. He always puts forth a good effort. I, like you say, I, he does need something to run at, but I was really encouraged. I thought there was a big race behind Ambidextrous Duke last time, who would be very tough in here if mm. Ambidextrous Duke was in here. So I put Promise Glory on top of Timber Topper, your top pick, one that figures to be tough mm. in here. And I put Say Fabulous in the third spot, the old horse, making just his third start of the year, but he does get Hamill. That's a significant rider upgrade, I feel. And uh, so I threw him in the third spot. I went one, five, and seven in the second. On the third, a Phillies optional 25 for straight three-year-old Phillies, going six and a half furlongs, field of six here. I went to the one Omi, uh, Dino and the Swift Thoroughbreds are just uh, very, very gifted. You know, uh, right now they're just full of gifted three-year-old Phillies, oh. and uh, they seem to have them all. So this filly, who's been running very good in the stakes company, is expendable to run in an optional 25 because then they have Snuggles and uh, Key. Well, they sprinter, and, uh, too. They want to sprinter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she doesn't look like a route filly. So yeah, definitely a sprinter as well. But, she's uh, not in for the price. For me, so. you know, she only gets beat two links by Snuggles and Princess Katie. Comes back with another good effort. Only beat two and a half in the Emerald Downs. Drops in a nice spot in the 25. Hamill takes the call. I'm going with Omi. She's gonna, they're going to have to catch her. Her main threat, obviously, for me is our triple charm, just coming off a nice maiden special weight win over the boys. Uh, and the horse she beat, Admiral Jackson, came back to win a conditional 16 against older runners. Oh, awesome. Timber King came back last weekend to almost win a maiden 25. That's a live race that this filly comes out of, yeah. running against the boys. She's got to be respected in here, but should be very tough. I got her in the second spot. And I put winning edge, nice maiden breaking score on the head end uh, in her first start of the year. Then ran against, another one that ran against the boys, Lord Vancouver, Dashing Dawn, Sunscape. This is an easier spot for her. I put her in the third spot. I went one, three, two. Yeah, I agree with the top three. I just flip-flopped them. I'm going to go our triple charm. Uh, this horse has been huge odds in both of her races this year and uh, ran incredibly well. I mean, yeah, that was a big race. Philly was so game in defeating uh, Admiral Jackson. Like, this horse was all hard. I just think this horse has a, you know, it's a pretty special filly that, you know, might have something. The one Omi uh, tried stakes company last time. Got you know, when you lose, when you you win a race, then you lose. It's tough sometimes to get back on form or lose a couple of races and get back on in form. You know, you're a little deflated. And, mm. and here's our Triple Charm, who's on the upswing. And, yeah. You know, sometimes even though Omi may, may be the better, what I'm trying to say is Omi may be the better filly, but our triple charm is the horse going, going the right, right way, way yeah. and uh, might be the one that can win. Anyway, they're both nice quality fillies. Yeah. It'll be probably an inch between them at the wire. There won't be much. And, and the two winning edge, I agree, is the third best horse, or, and, and can possibly win. As you mentioned, running against the boys last time, no filly race went that particular weekend when uh, Craig McPherson needed a race, so he ran her against the boys, and she's she may be able to take advantage of a fast pace and uh, close into it. I went 3 1 2. I like our triple charm for Randy Hudson. On to the fourth race, uh, $50,000. A nice Good race feature here. race here. Optional 50, going a mile on the 16th, 3 and up. I ended up on the three. Uh, Mysterious Soul, I think he's the best horse in the race. Has he had the best lead up to the race? No. Uh, but at least he's he got has a, a race sprint going belt, into him. Yeah. Last year, he. He didn't get the benefit of a sprint, ran second to a square. He ran a square dancer every time uh, in his three race season last year, and and square dancer was on a roll. And yeah. he always had to run fast fractions and still was right there. He was chasing Modern in two of the three of those races. And who Modern, who was the top older horse on the grounds. Uh, so I, I just think Modern, or pardon me, Mysterious Soul is in a very good spot here against horses that are haven't quite got the resume as him. Shooting Jacket does, uh, but he needs Mysterious Soul to get caught up in a crazy pace or something. But Ms. Shooting Jacket is running back in just nine days, and that was the only reason I, I kind of didn't take him. Twist Grips has never proven he can go long to me, but he's on a roll. He, this yeah. horse has won three consecutive races. If, he, if he's ever going to win going to mile 16, it's now. And uh, he's never been disgraced going long, but he's just a horse that seems to be a good late-closing sprinter. That, But 
He's in top form for John Snow's just going great right now. But uh, I put him in for third. I went 3 1 2. I did put Twist Grips on top just because you mentioned this horse is rolling right he's, now. He's, he's, he's hot. He's hot. Distance is a question. That's well, all. distance is a question, but last time when he was running those. Uh, distance races he was doing okay but he wasn't the same horse as he is now now he's just rolling and i think he can get the distance so i put him on top of mysterious soul i agree i think mysterious soul's in with a big shot i like the fact that he has a race under his belt yeah, good sprint <coughs> prep to prep him going long only got beat last year he didn't two links one. by twist grips and now it's more on his turf and i put shooting jacket who's the obvious favorite in for mm -hmm. third i went two three and one in the fourth on to the fifth an $8,000 claimant event, non wears a two or three BC breads. Uh, three old and up, six and a half furlongs, field of 10. Big field of 10 in here. I, I went to the obvious horse in here, Merlot. Um, only gets, you know, he's been knocking heads with the $16,000 conditional horses all year. Uh, now he drops in for eight. And I just, I can't see who's going to beat him. I mean, he looks like, on paper, he looks like a standout in here. I got Merlot on top. I threw in Mike Shibera overtime. Had two okay runs. He's had some time off and come back. Uh, Mike's done a good job with this horse over the years, and uh, I just think there's more there. It's kind of muddled. The rest of the race, I have trouble getting a, a, a hard and fast opinion on anybody. Yeah, uh, I it's, agree. It's, it's Merlot, and then I don't know. So I put overtime in second. I put Katsanova, another one that's kind of a question mark, uh, in the third spot, coming off a of fourth uh, at this level. But uh, I'm going to give him another chance. Uh, he switches to uh, Antonio Reyes. He's going great guns. So I, I, I got six. And then I don't know. But I did put five and two after that. I would six, five, and two. Yeah, I agree with the six. Merlot, I mean, probably getting eligible for the uh, champion starter series. And you got to run for the eight grand yeah. to get eligible for the starter series. But uh, And looking for a win. He's disappointed. He needs to win. Yeah. He needs to win a race. And he's he's got that running style where he he never passes a horse. He's yeah. in, I don't know, he's just... He's lacking that killer instinct, which which worries me for a horse that's going to be three to five in a race. Likely yeah, three yeah, to five in this a race. Bit of a I'm worried man. about yeah. about him in this race. I think he'll win, but I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't. I put the seven forestry. This seven. could be a race where you get a big price for your yeah. Cedar Sky pick six. I wouldn't be surprised to see you know. You well, get, if, if Merlot doesn't win, then then it's, it's, it's pretty price, much yeah. anyone because I don't really like Wonder World. And no, I didn't like Wonder World. Just, uh, just yeah, didn't never pick up the horse. Horseshoe's Devil yeah. interests me. That was my second horse. Yeah, just because the horse is coming out of two, three excellent races, two shoe swaps, and, and uh, Samil Kami and Lou. Those are all three races were really tough, and this race is a lot easier. You're looking at, uh, you know, Wonder World wants to run long. Casanova wants to run long. Wadey's Command just finished winning a non two. Stallman Pete There's overtime. A of those in there, yeah. There's a lot of Blue Storm Cloud, a three year old, goes way back to non two four. And Western, who this race, like, this is a good race. If Merlot doesn't run, I think Forestry's Devil's got a big chance to win the race, and yeah. that's why I put it in for second. I put Wonder World out of respect to, to the horse and to Carl Austin and the connections and in for third. But uh, I do, you know, Merlot's the horse to beat. But Forestry's be. Devil, I, I really like. Force, a 6 7 one in race number five. On the sixth race, uh, $25,000 optional claimer here. Good race. Three year olds going six and a half furlongs. Uh, Always Sunny and Crushing Candy are the two horses I yeah. like. Uh, Always Sunny to me was was pretty impressive in his maiden score. You'll look at Coulterberry. If you look at Coulterberry, they ran the same day. Coulterberry, the Lord Vancouver race. Always Sunny ran first time of his life, ran a fifth of his second faster. The Lord Vancouver, who ran second, but too opportunistic yeah. in the in the uh, last stake race, the Chris Loseth, uh stakes race, uh, which doesn't always mean that you know, it's, it's tough to compare race to race, but um, I think it does show a significant, you know, the, that Always Sunny was very good. Yeah, he's got some class, and he's a full brother to all, the Brass and Gold. Brass and Gold, he's, he's got nice some horse, credentials. Yeah. Crushing Candy was awesome, 21 and 2, 44 and 4, battling the whole way, nailed at the end. He was still fighting at the end of the race. Crushing Candy's live. Uh, those are your two horses to me. I put Coulterberry in for third, four, two, three. I agree. I got Crushing Candy on top just because that was an yeah. extremely impressive race last time. 21 and 2, 44 and 4, and kept fighting. Only gets beat a half a length. So 
I'm worried about there's a pile of speed. There is there gas in there. Like that could dashing push them dawn yeah. goes. Yeah. Rock concert blinkers back on. Go. I just worry. But but Colter twenty one and two. It doesn't matter. That horse is like cats. fast and yeah. it just keeps going. But that's I, I put him on top. I got always sunny. I agree with you. I think always sunny has a lot of upside. But uh, I couldn't put him on top of Crushing Candy off that last race that Crushing Candy ran. Yeah. So I got him on top of yeah. Always Sunny. I threw Power Corrupt, who ran a very good race, his first start. Uh, came back, was a little That's flat a nice in, horse, in, yeah. in the Jim Coleman province. Mike's given him a little time off, and uh, he's come back working well since then. And I think the little rest, uh, he should be on his game. I went 2-4-1 and one in the sixth. On to the seventh. Maiden fours. Maiden fours. I went to the nine awesome cause. I'm a little concerned. He ran on the 18th of June and there's no work showing since then, but he comes definitely out of the uh, toughest race. He comes out of an $8,000 race, uh, the keep right on one. He only got beat a half a length by Adams River Run, who come back to win, uh, or come back to run second, sorry. Uh, those are just way tougher horses than he shows in Footman. here. So. No, those are all. Yeah, those are much tougher. They're all dropping. So I'm going with awesome cause. Over my eye candy, who's uh, got two straight seconds at. Uh, you know, decent prices uh, for trainer Rob Maven and uh, figures to be in the mix here. Could take them a long way with uh, in a race where there's not a lot of gas. Uh, my eye candy could lead the way. And I threw Sal in for third. Uh, John Snow tr still trying to kind of figure this guy out. He keeps hitting the board, but not really getting over the top. So I put him in the third spot. I went nine, eight, and three. Yeah, I, I agree with the, your, your assessment of the race. Uh, awesome cause on paper after the last race, you know, should should win the money. I mean, he's coming out of the toughest race. He ran well. Uh, keep right on. Adams River Run and Footman are better horses than these horses. Yeah. They would all be two to five in this race, all three of those horses. So I, I, this horse is really good. I think you might get seven to two on the horse, which yeah. is good. Uh, the eight horse My Eye Candy uh, has had a lot of chances, but still that race, two, even two back. Last time going along, got pressured in the interior fractions, which was cost, uh, cost him. But, but two back, just got beat to uh, Cruise Dancer, and it was a long shot. But still, the horse ran a pretty good race to, be, to almost win it. And the three, Sal, brutal trip going along. This horse yeah. was four wide the whole race. Sal had just a horrendous trip. Salvino Morales rides so good and is, that wasn't is his an best awesome one, yeah. rider. And it wasn't even his fault. I mean, this horse just got hung out and, uh, you know, had a brutal trip. Sal's worth following. This horse can win the race easily. Yeah. I agree through, though, 9-8-3. On to the eighth and final race, uh, $4,000 non at two lifetime, going a mile to 16. I ended up on the five, Rosie's Notice, uh, dropping from the $8,000 level. Got to be tough in here. Wasn't disgraced behind, uh, you know, Brother Duster and Stablemate Tucci and Distillery. Uh, Rosie's Notice is dangerous. The one, one big promise, you know, it continues to run into the places, placings uh, going along. I put him in for second and the six, War on. Uh, finished right with one big problem. There's a lot on there for second last time, so I put him in for third. I went five, one, six, but I think Rosie's notice is. Yeah, I agree. Rosie's notice has to be very tough in here with the, you know, finally getting down to the four thousand level for the first time in his yeah. life. I got Rosie's notice. I agree on top of one big promise. Barb's other horse in here. He's right in the mix. Uh, he has to be respected. Uh, the only difference I did from you, Mike, I put Famous Winner in the third spot. Yep, he was right there it. with uh, One yep. Big Promise last time. And uh, he's going the right way. You know, this is a horse. It was like a four-way photo for a second yeah. in that race. It was like they were all there. They're all competitive. Yeah. Uh, other than a Rosie's, Rosie's noticing, that horse is kind of a... Yeah, I think he's a standout, and then it's and kind, then of rest kind of everybody else. Close. I went, uh, what did I do? I mark this one down. Five, one, and four. Five, one, four. For in me. the nightcap. That'll do it for our analysis of the Sunday program. Up next on screen will be our picks. Mike, as always, you're up first. Back in race number one. I went to the six. Burnham, six, five, and two. In the uh, Sunday opener, race number two under the five, Timber Topper back in town from Emerald Downs, five, four, and one. Race number three, a uh, tough one for me, uh, our triple charm, the three horse over the one Omi. Those two were inseparable. I went three, one, two. Race number four, I went to the three, Mysterious Soul, another race where I thought the three and one were very close. Three, one, two again. Race number five, I went to the six, Merlot. Over the seven forestry's devil, but could be the value of play of the seven forestry's devil. Six, seven, one. Race number six, the four, always sunny over the two, crushing candy and the three, Coulterberry. Uh, should be a good race. A lot of speed and signed on, and maybe always sunny can make it two for two. Race number seven, I went to the nine, eye candy, or eye candy. Awesome cause over my eye candy. And Sal for third, nine, eight, and three. And then the eighth and final, number five, Rosie's Notice, five, one, and six. Sunday finale. On to my picks. There we go in the first race. 
I agree with Mike number six, Burnham over the five and the two. In the second race, I went to number one, Promise Glory over the five and the seven. In the third, number one, Omi over the three R Triple Charm and the two Winning Edge. In the fourth, some really good races today. There's another one. In the fourth, uh, it's an I excellent went, allowance race. Yeah, it's really nice. good race. I went to the two Twist Grips over the three Mysterious Soul and the one Shooting Jacket. In the fifth, I went to the six Merlot over the five and the two. In the sixth, I went to the two Crushing Candy over the four Always Sunny and the one Power Corrupt. In the seventh, number nine, Awesome Cause over the hmm. eight. And the three, and the nightcap, I agree with Mike on number five, Rosie's Noses over the one and the four. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in to the Handicapper's Corner. Uh, hopefully giving you enough insight to uh, maybe make some uh, winning selections on the Sunday, July the 10th program. Uh, uh, as always, uh, it's been our pleasure doing it. Uh, don't forget, if you can't make it out to the, to the track, please do come out here to the Derby of Iron Grill. Always lots of drink specials, lots of simulcasting going on here in the South Surrey area at the Derby Bar and Grill on behalf of Drew. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget, big, probably, uh, hopefully in excess of 40,000 in the yeah. uh, Sea to Sky Pick 6. Check it out. Pick out a ticket. It's definitely better odds than playing um, uh, the... Uh, Play a scratch and win or something or, like that. No, yeah, no. Yeah, or, playing the lotteries. Or, yeah, no. It, the lotteries are tough. This is, you know, it's, it's difficult, but still, it's winnable. It, it should be a lot of fun. And, uh, on behalf of Drew, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time here at the Grill for Handicappers Corner.